Hi friends! In this video, I am going to be taking you through the very chaotic making of this Edwardian underbust corset. In the beginning, I was like, I want to do a project that is just going to kind of come together quickly and be satisfying to make. And also, I've been thinking about making one of these corsets for a while now, so why don't I pick out a free PDF pattern and put one together. So I found this corset called the Iris Corset, I think it's called, made by Arena Black, who, if you don't follow her, she makes a lot of amazing corset and corsetry content. Definitely go check her out. But actually, I think that corset isn't available anymore on her website. Like, I couldn't find it on her website. I had to go through something else to find it, so maybe she doesn't want people using that pattern anymore. I don't really know, but from what I remember reading about it, it is a sort of modernized version of a historical pattern taken from an Edwardian era corset. I didn't see an exact date. Uh, my guess is around 1900 to like 1905. So I printed it out and as someone who doesn't use a whole lot of PDF patterns, I did the irresponsible thing of printing all 35 or something pages right off the bat without printing off the scale page first to make sure that the scale was correct. And obviously one inch, oh my god it's bigger than an inch. That backfired and the scale was not correct and I ended up printing it at like 1.1 times size so everything was just slightly bigger than it should have been and of course slightly bigger in all dimensions, not just one. So. Rather than print it off again, I was like, I don't want to waste that much paper again. Let's just work with it. So now I have this pattern and there's the whole scale with all of the measurements, but that's kind of down the drain now that um, the entire pattern is not at the correct size. Anyways, I was already planning on grading between sizes because I am a little bit of a like inverted triangle shaped human. A larger size at the top and then a smaller size at the uh, hips. So I decided to cut out at the smaller size because I thought the bigger it would be, that would be enough, and it turned out I needed to be even smaller than that. Uh, but basically I just kind of hacked away at this pattern, measuring it with a measuring tape across a compressed motor of the underbirth, the waist, and the hips, uh, and I need some sort of making this as a pattern. So I'm not going to exactly the Anyways, after all of this guessing and measuring and re-guessing and re-measuring and just trying to like figure out how to make this pattern fit me, I decided to go ahead and make my corset with no mock-up because... The fabric 
that I'm going with for this corset is a super thick, sturdy herringbone cotille. I made a single layer construction, and for the boning channels, I wanted it to be fairly lightweight, so I went with a welted seam boning channel. I don't actually know the technical terms for these things. My corset making skills are intermediate at best. I constructed the whole corset like that. I pushed all of the boning channels from the seam towards the back of the corset, except for one of them, which I did not notice until pretty much the entire corset was constructed. Um, it is still that way, I didn't fix it. Uh, cause I guess I can't fix it cause the other set is short. But originally I was like, I don't wanna fix it because I'm lazy and I didn't even think about the fact that it's not fixable unless I actually took that entire panel out and recut it and put it back. But anyways, you may notice that my machine is skipping a lot of stitches. I don't know why. This is a Singer 201-2 machine, which most of the ones that I've heard people talk about, and uh, I, I've used another one that didn't do this. Like, most of them do really well with thick layers of fabric. For some reason, mine does not. Like, it will always skip stitches when I have thick layers. Kind of unfortunate. Because there are three seams in every single seam, like there's the first seam, and then there's the the, the last the welted seam and then there's an extra one that is sort of decorative and sort of to help keep the boning from twisting inside of the boning channels uh, Because there are three seams and I did a fairly short stitch length. I was like, it's probably fine But yeah, there are a ton of skip stitches Then I think I took a break from this because I went to visit my friend in Philadelphia uh, and I also then got COVID and was stuck in my room so I took a little bit of a break Then I put in the grommets. I actually almost considered not putting boning in some of these boning channels because I tried this corset on a few times with only boning by the lacing strips and it actually pretty much was doing what it was supposed to do without boning in most of the boning channels. But I did end up putting uh, synthetic whalebone in all of the boning channels. Cut the boning down to size and sanded off the edges. Uh, with some sandpaper. Yeah, that's how that went. <clears throat> For binding, I decided to go with these strips of undyed linen twill, just because the color matches pretty well to this cotille. Uh, it's probably not the best binding fabric, but because there's also flossing on all of my boning channels, the binding doesn't really matter uh, as far as structural integrity that much. So, yeah. I cut out these long strips of linen twill and then I sewed them. I decided to sew them by machine on the back and then bring it around to the front to sew by hand just because I thought that finish would be cleaner uh, and it looks fine. So I don't really have any regrets there. I did a simple uh, flossing design with some brown cotton embroidery floss, which is maybe not the ideal thing to do flossing with. Usually people would do it with a uh, silk buttonhole twist, but I thought the brown looked nice with the color scheme that I already had going on, and I only had uh, brown in cotton and not silk. So that is this corset pretty much 
complete. Side note, if you would like to see how I made this shirt that I'm wearing right now, I have a whole tutorial for that, which I will also link up here. Uh, but yeah, so this corset, this corset is done. My final thoughts about it, uh, it came out really, really, really well, honestly. The fit for having not made any mock-ups is like surprisingly perfect. I feel like I got really lucky here. It does have a ton of room in both the rib cage and the hips. I was playing with this today and I'm not someone who really tight laces or spends a lot of time in corsets, honestly, despite the fact that I've made a few of them now. And after wearing this for about an hour, lace down at about two inches, which is already more than I can usually do comfortably, I decided to try to see if I could lace it down even more comfortably, and I got to about three and a quarter inches of waist reduction, which for me and my body type and my experience level is a lot. I, I've never been able to get that on any other corset, and that was, there was no, you know, sharp pains or anything. My ribs did not feel compressed at all. This might be my new favorite corset. Anyways, here is the reveal. Stay tuned for a future video where I do a get ready with me with this corset and put on an entire outfit of early 1900s clothing from the undergarments out. And yeah, I will see you next time. Bye!